It is widely known that the Expo of Paris in 1867 is the moment Japanism occurred. For Japan, this is the first time to join the Expo and it is recorded that over 5,000 ukiyo-e were displayed. However, this is not the first time for people in the world to see them. It was already delivered to the world by some people who visited Japan, and these ukiyo-e influenced foreign artists such as James McNeil Whistler. In this video, I would like to explain how ukiyo-e got prevalent before the Paris Expo and the reason people got impressed. In the first place, does anybody know why ukiyo-e was sensational for people around the world at that time even though woodblock print had been already produced? In other countries, engraving in metal plates replaced woodblock print. One of the differences between a woodblock and a metal plate is the process of engraving. Woodblock print engraves the part which do not hold the ink. On the other hand, metal plates require engraving the part which holds the ink. In general, engraving of metal plates was able to express more details and woodblock print gradually became obsolete. People around the world were astonished by the fact that tiny details such as a hair and a rain were expressed in ukiyo-e even though it was made of woodblock print. In the early 19th century, Philip Franz Balthazar von Siebold, the German doctor, sent ukiyo-e to the Netherlands. He contributed to teaching the latest Western medical science to the Japanese and collecting information about Japan. In 1832, Siebold opened a museum in Leiden, the Netherlands, for his Japanese collection including ukiyo-e. In 1854, under the pressure of the United States, Japan declared to open the country to start trading with other countries by Convention of Peace and Amity between the United States of America and the Empire of Japan. The isolation of Japan, which lasted 200 years, has ended, and ukiyo-e was delivered to the world. For example, Felix Blackmont and Edmond du Goncourt were collectors of ukiyo-e in France. They contributed to introducing Japanese art, which became the foundation of Japanism. In the United Kingdom, the book Narrative of the Earl of Elgin's Mission to China and Japan in the years 1857-59 has been published and introduced ukiyo-e for the first time. This ukiyo-e had been just published in 1857 in Japan. As ukiyo-e was mainly published for commercial purposes, the latest prints were regarded as more valuable than the old ones. Therefore, at the early stage of the prevalence of ukiyo-e, people around the world bought the latest ukiyo-e at that time. We can see that the artist James McNew Whistler was affected by ukiyo-e of Utagawa Hiroshige through his painting of Capris in purple and gold. The woman holding ukiyo-e in her hand and put on the floor are the artwork of Utagawa Hiroshige, which depicts the views of Japan. The series of this artwork was published from 1853 to 56. By the way, according to academic research, this golden byobu has not been identified. I am curious about this byobu that Whistler depicted precisely. Please kindly let me know if you have any information on this. It might be too much to say, but I think that if these people didn't notice the allure of ukiyo-e, it would not have been displayed in the Paris Expo in 1867 and Japanism would not occur. For the next video, I would like to introduce more about Japanism after 1867 with many masterpieces of Western and Japanese artists. This is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and leave me a comment, even a short one. It is a great pleasure if you give me a big thumbs up. I shall see you in my next video.